guys, Rhonda Draculis here with Arcade 3 Designs. And we're gonna do something a little different today. Um, I usually show you a finish that uh, I create on a sample board and kind of wanting you to take that sample board and transfer it to maybe a countertop or, or something like that. Today we're actually gonna talk about applying finishes over an existing countertop, something that's already in your home, um, which I get a lot of, 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 lot of business that way. And so what I've done is I've actually gone to Home Depot and I purchased a six foot long Formica countertop, basically the cheapest one that they had. My husband cut it for me and you can see that I left a uh, small corner out here so that you can see the original finish. Okay, so what we're gonna start with today is a piece of the laminate and I've already prepped it to a certain extent. I um, have come in with a primer. Stone Coat Countertop sells a fabulous primer made for slick surfaces um, where it, your adhesion is really, really important. Um, I use that and I also use um, XIM and it's available on Amazon. So this is a great primer. Make sure that it is a bonding primer. It's not just a kilts all in one primer or something like that. It must be a bonding primer because what you're doing is you're taking a surface that's shiny and you're trying to, to, to make an adhesion. So what I do is I scuffed up the area with a 220 and applied my my primer. I'm going to go ahead and apply my epoxy finish, but I want to, for my customer's sake, as a, this being a sample board, I'm going to tape off so that when I pour my epoxy, I can pull the tape off and you can see the original substrate on this. All right, so I want to discuss a little bit of the disadvantages of pouring on location with a countertop that has an integrated backsplash. Epoxy, and it's being, being epoxy, is always going to run and try to self-level because that's the properties of epoxy. So your backsplash is going to have less epoxy on it than say your, your regular surface. And a lot of times you'll come and you'll do a beautiful finish on this back splash. And then in the morning you come and your beautiful finish has run down and pooled all in this area right here. So I'm gonna kind of show you how to uh, get around that. But the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna add a little bit of color, pre-fog that color um, so that if it, does start to run a little bit, and it will, you still have some interest back there. You still have something for the eyes to focus on. So I'll just take a little bit of color, and I'm not doing a lot, just, and I do it over the whole board, but I really wanna make sure I'm hitting that backsplash. Like I said, I'm not doing a lot. I also wanna do the same thing to these front corners, or these front edges, I'm sorry, because again, that's where the epoxy is gonna be running off and it's gonna be thinner along this area as opposed to the top. Just a little bit of fogging. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll um, start working with the epoxy. We're back and I've let my paint that I fogged uh, dry. Meanwhile, I've mixed up uh, 10 ounces of the Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. I tinted it with the white Stone Coat Countertop base and I'm gonna do kind of as like a little wow factor. I'm gonna add a little bit of their dust 
And when I say a little bit, I, I, I really mean a little bit. I don't want that to be the focus of the finish. I just want it to kind of catch your eye as you walk past. And if there's, you know, a sun coming through the kitchen window or something, that, that's going to catch your eye. So I'm just really adding a tiny bit. All right. And I've done my white base pretty opaque. So when I look, I'm not really seeing through to the stick. It's, it's a pretty opaque color. Um, then we're going to dump that out here. All right, I'm going to mix it up just in case my epoxy wasn't all mixed up on the sides. I'm going to make sure I get it. Now, obviously I can't trial it up onto the backsplash, but I am going to get it over the rest of the surface. I'm going to watch my edges. All right. Now you may ask why I'm not using a pure white paint since I'm using a white base. And the, and the answer is, as I start doing my marble effect, I'm gonna actually be tinting the white base. It's gonna have kind of a grayish undertone, I guess. So if I were to have a stark white base, then every place where the epoxy was thin at every break or on this back wall, being that my epoxy is not going to be a true white, once I start bringing in some colors, that vivid white is going to pop through and you'll really notice it. By going a shade lower, which is what I've done here, that's going to give me some depth. Uh, so that I'm not just looking through the thin epoxy and seeing a stark white background. So that's why I've brought in a, a darker background. So I'm going to start ch chopping my surface. Addressing my edges. And now I'm going to bring it up on the top. You can see I'm just kind of grabbing it, knowing that the epoxy is going to run back down and it's going to pool right here in my corner. Now I know that, so later on in the process, I'm actually going to take that epoxy setting up and use it to my advantage. All right. This one thing you need to make sure you pay attention to is bristle hairs. And you can already see where the epoxy is the thinnest because you can actually see down through the epoxy to the underlying um, color. All right, so I'm going to torch these bubbles out. Now that's another thing that you'll notice. I'm not going to torch this back area, but a bare minimum. The more I torch my epoxy, obviously the thinner it gets and the more it's going to run. So I'm the bare minimum. I don't, I don't see any, any bubbles on my backsplash, so I don't really feel the need to, to use that torch on there. Same thing with my edges. I want to be really careful about how much I actually use that heat torch. You can start off with a just a black, and as you chop, you know, obviously your black is going to mix with the white and, and give you some grays. But I, I honestly, I like to start with a darker gray. Then I can always get darker with my black, and I can get lighter with my lighter grays. So I actually do use several shades of gray. And I'm going to be very, very liberal with this. I'm going to start off, but I happen to know that this particular customer wants a marble 
that's pretty gray. I know that she, she, she kind of does want more of a gray and, and not a lot of white. She's going to have stark white uh, cabinets, so she wants her countertops to have a little more color in it. So I know that kind of going into it, so I'm going to be a little more liberal, I guess you would say, with my color. And I'm just kind of chopping those colors in. And letting it kind of start to move and make its own designs. Now, I am putting color back here, but I'm not going to put a lot of color, and I'll tell you why. Because as this starts to settle, you're going to see these colors drain down, and they're going to start to pull over here in the corner. And I don't want that yet. I am going to go back with some more color, but I did want to put a hint of color right now. But that's about all I'm going to put on the backsplash right now. All right, so I'm kind of liking that. I'm going to come in with a different color gray. I'm going to come in with a smoke gray. That first one I used was a, a dark gray. This is a smoke gray. Just a little different shade. Not a whole lot of variations, just a little bit. Okay, so I'm using my heat. I guess I'll just use my torch a little quicker. If you have tape, just be really careful that you don't catch that tape on fire. And I only tell you that because I've done it. All right, so I'm gonna hit it just a little bit of the pearl metallic mist uh, in 91% isopropyl alcohol with the mica powders. So I'm just going to hit just a little bit and it's going to be just like the diamond dust that I put in there. I'm not putting enough on there to really cause a wow factor. It's just going to be a hint. All right, now I'm going to use my heat gun. Move it around. Get that marble effect going. And again, I'm not going to be doing a lot on the backsplash. Okay. You can already see how much white I have here and how it's already running off that backsplash. So if I hadn't have fogged any color on this backsplash, it would just be a, a solid gray. But I knew in advance that it was going to be running off and that I was going to have my pattern end up the little wedge. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little bit of color. Now I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm going to let this set up for about 15 minutes and I'm not going to touch it anymore at all. I'm going to walk away and I'm going to let all of this kind of set up a little bit so I have a little more um, thickness. The epoxy is going to get thicker so when I go back and I add some color it's going to want to stay. So. I'll check back with you in just a few minutes. So we're back and I've let my epoxy set for about 15 minutes. Now it's, the temperature in here is, is pretty nice. I've got my AC on and it's probably 75 degrees, I guess. It's not going to set up super fast. I have about 45 minutes worth of work time. But I'm just bringing in some more epoxy and I'm just kind of painting it on, picking up some of this epoxy that's run down here in this uh, void this little curve and I'm just gonna paint it on there same thing with my edges bring in some epoxy even take it off the edge use those drips use the drips from underneath now I'm not going to torch this because 
if I'm torching it, all I'm doing is spinning my wheels because I'm heating up my epoxy again and um, causing it to just run. So now you see I have no color. So this is where I'm actually not even going to spray. I'm going to come back with the color I had here on my brush. And I'm very lightly going to add some color. I'm not going to over chop it because I know that this epoxy is still going to be running. Just kind of bring it in there so it still has a very natural look. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to bring in and kind of re-chop so that I can make it all look as if it were done at the same time. You can even kind of take that and feather it a little bit to make it look a little more like marble so that I don't have to heat it to get it to have that melded look like the rest of the piece. Same thing here. Bring down some color, not a bunch. All right. Okay. Now you'll have up to 45 minutes to keep doing this. And you, you feel like you need to come back and just keep adding. You can keep adding. Sometimes it's actually a good idea to mix up a little more than three ounces per square foot so that you have some epoxy left in your cup to come back and manipulate that backsplash. There we go. All right. So I'm going to torch that. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to torch my backsplash. Just going to hit it where I chopped and brought in some different colors. I'll let it sit and, and kind of just keep working this epoxy until I've achieved the look that I like. So that's how I take care of that integrated backsplash is it takes a little bit more time, uh, a little bit more patience and a little bit more epoxy, but you can get that really pretty backsplash to match the rest of your countertop if you uh, just use these, uh, these little tips. All right, well, I appreciate you watching today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, or my website, www.rk3designs.com. And I look forward to um, answering any questions that you may have. Remember, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe with the little bell so that when I post new videos, you'll be um, alerted or, what is that called? Notified. Notified. <laughs> All right, everyone have a great day and thanks for uh, tuning in.